what the hell is this? I'm gonna add a bit more to this side. Oh crap, okay, maybe that was a bit much. Or should I say, OMG. It looks like it's smoking. Do it, do it. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be testing loads of new products on my face, basically. That's it. <laughs> I do these kind of videos all the time. If you're a subscriber, you will know that. And if you're not subscribed, maybe you wanna subscribe so you can see me test more videos like this. Test more videos, test more makeup, test, see more videos like this. <laughs> I've got some viral products in here as well, which I'm also gonna be testing. And so I think we should just get into it. There might also potentially be a giveaway in this video. So maybe stay tuned and watch the video to find out how. I moved my Halloween decorations about a bit and I think I prefer this arrangement because you can see a lot more of them. This is something that I've heard people talk about for years and I've never tried it. It's the Illa Masca Hydravail Rehydrating Gel. I think it's supposed to be quite like a tacky primer that is really good for wearing underneath foundation, but we'll see about that. Also, can we just talk about how good my skin is doing at the moment? I definitely go through phases of my skin as most people do with like hormonal breakouts and stuff around my cheeks, but at the moment it is looking so glowy. Ooh, the packaging looks very fancy. I don't actually know if I've tried anything from Illa Masca before. It comes with a little spatula. Oh wait, is that a spatula? Okay, wait, scrap that. Maybe it's not a spatula. Wait, what? I don't want to break it. That feels like it should come off, but I think it might just be to lift the lid off. Oh my God, it's literally like jelly. Can you see this? Yeah, wait, what? What is this? I don't even know. I'm just gonna use the back of my nail and pick up Oh my god, look at that. It is actually like a full on jelly. Oh my god, how am I gonna get this on my face without it just dropping off? Okay, and then as you blend it in, it just sort of, like it said, turns into a more watery sort of texture. Just that little amount, I think was actually too much because my face now feels a bit too covered in it. The main thing that I've changed with my skincare recently is I've started using my Dermatica again. I don't know if anybody has heard of it or if it's like a well-known thing, but it's kind of like a subscription service thing for your skin and you can like change the ingredients and you like send them pictures of your skin and then they sort of like customize the, the skin stuff to your skin. Worst description ever, but my skin seems to really quite like it. I love the feeling of this. I know that Illamasca is quite a pricey brand, but this feels amazing. The like leftover sort of feel feeling reminds me of the milk Hydro Grip, but my skin now feels like plump. It feels like some of that moisture has soaked into my skin. Since my video the other day where I did my eyebrows before my foundation, I have now rediscovered that sort of like fluffy soaked brow type look again. And I don't know why I ever went back to just not doing my eyebrows before my foundation. Mostly just cause I forget. So this is a product from Beauty Bay. It's Beauty Bay own brand and it is called the Brush Up Brows Brow Soap. It literally just looks like a clear soap and actually I should probably read the instructions. They also sent with it a pack of spoolies. This is my plant mister. It's just water, so. When I first got this, I thought it was one of those sort of like balm ones where you don't need water, but it is actually like a brow sort of soap, I think. And... Ooh, we'll run this through the brows. Oh, I have a question for you guys. I did purchase, <laughs> I did purchase, Nikki Tutorials skincare brand, Nimya. I bought the whole bundle and then it arrived and I just don't really know what to do with it. As in, I don't know whether people, like it's too late now to do a whole dedicated video on Nimya by Nikki Tutorials. I don't even know if people would be interested in a dedicated video on skincare stuff because that's not what I normally do. And obviously I'm not like a skincare expert but her skincare stuff was made to sort of pair with makeup. So I was sort of undecided whether to just feature it in a testing video with a bunch of other makeup or whether to do an, a full dedicated video on Nimya. So let me know. Pretty good. I'm just brushing them up with my finger, which sort of then gets rid of the excess product. Look at those crazy eyebrows. I actually really need to retint my eyebrows. I have another question as well. Sorry, I'm in a really chatty mood today. This video is probably gonna be about two hours long. I'm getting, I've got a hair appointment booked in a couple of weeks time and I'm so tempted. It was just originally gonna be me getting like a top up of my blonde because my natural hair has grown out quite a lot and underneath my hair is quite dark. Like all of that, is my natural hair colour and then on top it's like a more I guess like a light brown slash dark 
blonde like weirdly the bits at the front actually grow from the root a little bit more blonde and part of me is kind of tempted to go a bit darker like more towards my natural hair color on the bottom because it's grown out quite a lot anyway like all of this bit is my natural color but i don't know i was thinking of maybe doing like a light brown ish sort of balayage with a few sort of like lighter pieces in there as well but i don't know i just i've never had dark hair and it wouldn't be dark but just like a little bit darker than it is now but also i'm kind of scared so um um, if anyone else has got a similar hair colour to me and has decided to go a bit darker, let me know what you thought of it. Is it a terrible idea? Maybe. I wouldn't do it permanent though. Maybe just something like temporary. I like this brow soap. It kind of is just behaving like any other sort of brow soap that I've tried, but it's pretty decent. And it hasn't left like white chunks in my eyebrow. I'm then taking this, which is the Barry M Feather Brow Defining Pen. I've got the shade Medium, which <laughs> looking at it, this actually looks quite dark. So I'm a bit scared. And also compared to the NYX one, this one's got quite a big, thick pen. Oh my God, this is really dark. So what I was trying to do is like little brow hair strokes because this is so dark. I'll use the spoolie to sort of like blend it out in a bit, but let's just keep going, adding some strokes to my eyebrows. Let me just fix it while I talk because it looks like an absolute stink. I'm just gonna use the spoolie to sort of like brush it through a bit and make it look a bit more natural. Oh, wow, it doesn't really seem to be budging. I'm trying to sort of blend it out, but those lines are not going anywhere. Yeah, it really doesn't blend out very easily. Like it's quite a waterproof one, I think, which is good. It seems to be more like waterproof than the next one. But the one thing I would say about this is the brush is quite big. What the hell is this? This is a mess, like an absolute mess. Um, Okay, bear with me two seconds. And the concealer's not covering it it just won't budge okay what i am gonna do i'm just gonna go sort this out i'm gonna use the beauty beard brow, brow soap again but i'm gonna use my nyx brow pen instead that is such a shame about that one the brush is just a little bit too thick if i'd have picked the lighter shade to use it wouldn't have been that bad okay cool i also redid the areas of primer like on my forehead and around my brows for my foundation i've got this which is a new one from bare minerals i really love bare minerals as a brand however the liquid foundation like it's the original one, it's quite nice, but it's not my favourite. This is the Bare Minerals Original Liquid Mineral Foundation, and it's got SPF 20 in it. I've got the shade Light 08, and it says that it's a light as air liquid foundation with a boosted mineral formula, which apparently leaves your skin looking naturally airbrushed and reduces the look of pores and redness over time. I think the shade might be a little bit dark. Twist to open. Let's take like two-ish pumps. Yeah, this is definitely gonna be too dark. I think it said it was a medium coverage. Yeah, the shade is definitely, definitely too dark for me. It's all good, I will lighten it up. At least this will be good for my pumpkin Halloween makeup look. In terms of the actual formula, it looks pretty nice actually. Um, it's blended really easily. It's got, I would definitely say like a medium coverage. Um, it's definitely not full because you can still sort of see like some of my scars coming through and stuff, but the finish of it looks really nice actually. And it's not too thick. You can definitely see it on the skin, but it's not too thick. I'm just gonna use a concealer that's quite a bit lighter to sort of like lighten my face a little bit because the foundation is too dark. I'm using my Maybelline Instant anti Arage Azer a rage age eraser in the shade ivory and i'm gonna put on a lot because i want to sort of use this as an extra sort of foundation and then on my blemishes i'm using the shade sand which is the one that i usually use in terms of the primer though underneath this it really feels like stuff is sort of sticking to it okay i think i've sort of saved that a little bit i have got some new made by mitchell products these two are ones that i purchased which are the blush bronzed in shady business and then i also got another blush shade because my absolute favorite is the peach sugar one and i actually do have a backup of my peach sugar which i'm waiting to open but like this one i don't know if you can see like the it's like getting i'm scraping around the sides of it so i got this one which is called can't cope with coral and then also from mitchell's new collection he launched this what is this even called? What is the palette called? I think it's called Do You Want Some Milk? So I actually bought this palette and I also bought the blush bronzed and the other blush and an eyeliner. And then the next day I was sent a package from Mitchell in PR, which was this palette, the new blushes and the eyeliners. So I've actually now got a spare 
palette that I bought and an eyeliner from the new collection. So I'm gonna do a giveaway with them. And when I do my eyes, I'll talk you through the giveaway. I have seen all over TikTok people using purple blush not blush, purple blush. And Mitchell has got a purple blush in his new collection, which is called Dairy Queen. So I might try this. And if I hate it, I'll put a bit of this over the top. But first I've got my Shady Business blush. He has some really good shades of these. I will admit, I have actually tried this before the video because I wanted to film this like last week but then I got ill. <laughs> Luckily the two videos that I did do last week, I'd already filmed them on like the Monday, I think. And then on Tuesday, I went down with James's awful cold and we've both been ill for like the whole week. And so I got impatient and I tried it already. I'll just show you now because it is a really nice cream bronzer. This one's definitely more of a bronzer than a contour, I think, but I mean, it is called Blush Bronzed. But I feel like I've said this in videos before, like Mitchell is such a talented makeup artist and he is one of the nicest people I've probably met in this industry. Like he's just so friendly to everyone. He's just so lovely and he's so talented and he's absolutely killing it with his makeup brand. You might think that I'm being biased about his products, but honestly, his blushes, like that peach sugar blush is my favorite liquid blush that I think I've ever tried. So that's enough of me um, kissing Mitchell's ass. <laughs> so next up, we have got the purple blush. I'm a little bit scared for this and I also want to film a TikTok at the same time of this, so I'm just trying to figure out how this is gonna work. Let's just start off with this much. Quickly blend. You know what? That's not as scary as I thought it was gonna be. It looks so bright, but when you actually blend it out, it's not as bright. Let's do the other side. I'm gonna add a bit more to this side. Oh crap, okay, maybe that was a bit much. Oh no, oh no. Okay, wait, let me blend this out. Okay, yeah, I definitely put too much on this side. Let's just go back in with my sponge. It's actually very subtle now that I've blended it out and sort of gone over it with my beauty blender. I think it will probably suit people that have more of a deep skin tone. It doesn't sort of bring me to life as much as my other like peachy pink blushes sort of do. I think I will go over it with a little bit of Can't Cope With Coral. And just to show you the difference between peach sugar, to be honest, I think peach sugar would probably work on everyone because it is such a pigmented color, but Can't Cope With Coral is a lot lighter. It's got quite a bit more white in it and it looks like that. You know what, let me just, um, let's put some on the back of my hand and then I can pick it up from there. Okay, yeah, so this is Can't Cope With Coral. I definitely do still prefer peach sugar, but this one is still really nice. They have this sort of like smoothing effect on your skin, I think. Like they're very blurring. I just really like them. I really, really like them. For my face powder, I've got this one, which is the Sculpted by Amy Connolly Velvet Veil Invisible Loose Setting Powder. I've actually seen this brand on the Boots website now. So it looks like this and you flip the lid up. Oh, mine has actually sort of got powder all over it already. And then it does actually have like a little thing that you can rotate to stop the powder from coming out, which is really handy if you're traveling. The only thing is because the lid doesn't come off, where am I supposed to tip it into. I guess I just give it a little shake. <gasps> okay, don't do that because it's just come out the hole. Slight packaging flaw. <laughs> it looks like it's smoking. That is the most finely milled powder I've ever seen in my life. It doesn't even look like powder. It looks like snow. Oh my god, it's literally flying around everywhere. It's all got in my eyes. Oh man, oh man, oh man. It's all got in my contact lenses. Okay, let me just put this on the rest of my face. I'll give it that. It does look very smoothing, but it flies around everywhere that it's actually all got stuck into my contact lenses. So I'm gonna have to go put some eye drops in in a minute, but let me just set the rest of my face. I think that was my mistake. I picked up way too much of my brush. You just need a little bit. And maybe it would be more beneficial instead of using a brush to use a little like powder puff. My skin looks so smooth and it is so finely milled. I'll be right back. I'm just gonna go put some eye drops in. Guys, honestly, everything is just going so wrong. I put in too many eye drops and then I was crying all down my face and I was worried that it like messed up all my makeup just then. And then with my left contact lens, I went to get it out. I accidentally ripped it. So I had to put in a new contact lens and then I got back in here and I was like, where is my phone? I couldn't see my phone anywhere. I've just been running around the house. Like where have I just put my phone? Like I must've moved it when I went to change my contact lenses. Couldn't find my phone anywhere. I was really really stressing out because I'm in the house by myself. 
I'm waiting on a message from James and so there's no one here to call my phone and then I thought okay I'll just finish the video and then I'll look for my phone sit back down to film and my phone is obviously attached to my tripod that I just used to film the TikTok Moving on, for my powder bronzer, I've got this, which is the Too Faced Teddy Bear Bear It All Bronzer. And it's in the shade Honey Bun Glow. The packaging is so cute. Look at that packaging. And then on the inside, it's a little teddy bear. It smells nice. I think the Gold Heart is an overspray, so I'm just gonna, yeah, it is. I'm just gonna use a little bit of this. Shimmery bronzer. If I don't mind a bit of a shimmery bronzer. It's not really doing a whole lot for actually bronzing my face. Am I being crazy? I don't actually think it's adding any colour, it's just adding glow, like highlighty glow. I just had to dip in about 12 times for it to actually show up on my face. The glow is there, but there's just not a whole lot of colour in it. It's probably actually a bit too much glow for the forehead. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of powder blush. I know that I probably don't need it, but this is another one by Bare Minerals, and it is in the shade That Peach though. It looks almost the same colour as the Made by Mitchell one. But I just, I love blush. And I like to layer blush because I actually find that that way it lasts a lot longer. Yeah, it's literally like the same colour. Lovely. And then for my highlighter, I've got one from Illamasqua. I used to see so much about these Illamasqua highlighters about five or six years ago. I got sent some stuff from, from Illamasqua to try. And this is the shade OMG of their Beyond Powder Highlighter. I did swatch it on the back of my hand and it looks stunning. Let's see what it's like on my face. Oh wow, oh wow, oh wow. <gasps> or should I say, OMG. I wasn't really sure how well it's gonna stick because my face is so matte. But oh my God, <laughs> there we go. It just gives a like, almost like a candle lit type glow. Okay, it hasn't really stuck on that cheek as well, has it? Look at that though. There must've been a bit here that I missed with powder because it's all like clung to that little bit. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely I must have missed a bit of my powder. One sec. I'm just gonna add a bit of this, which is the new Urban, actually I don't even think it's new anymore. It's probably about six months old. The Urban Decay All Nighter Ultra Glow Setting Spray. The Urban Decay All Nighter is amazing. I used it every single day when we were on holiday. Okay, so while my face is still a little bit wet, I'm gonna add a bit more of the highlighter. Ooh, it's gone really weird here. It's gone really like, strangely patchy where I'd powdered my under eyes but I think I'd missed a little bit on my cheek. I wish I'd sprayed my face before I put it on but that is not the fault of the highlighter. I think it's because my face was so matte before but on this side it worked absolutely perfectly which is really strange. I know that Illamasqua products are definitely um, pricey, they're quite pricey but this is really, really beautiful. It just looks so smooth on the skin, like it doesn't emphasize any texture. It's literally just like a gorgeous, smooth glow, minus this bit of patchiness. <laughs> and the glowy setting spray, I think it looks nice. Finally, we move on to the eyes. So I'm just quickly gonna prime my eyes with a bit of my ABH primer. This is what the palette looks like. So it's called Do You Need Some Milk? I think the packaging looks sick. I absolutely love it. But on the inside, you get a little sheet that says that on it and then this is the palette how stunning how stunning and then as well as that he's also launched these graphic liners um in lots of different colors they've got brown there's black there's white there's neon yellow there's blue there's purple there's pink there's like pretty much every color and i want to do something warm toned and autumnal because there's lots of gorgeous like autumn colors in here like those top two rows and then the bottom row are so autumnal but then there's also some fun colors so i want to do something autumnal with a bit of a twist maybe with like a bit of neon yellow or something. I'll just have a little play around and see what I come up with. So I'm gonna start off with the shade Caramel, I think, which is this one up the top. Oh my God, I've just seen, he's named the gray shade Binks. Is that named after the cat in Hocus Pocus? I watched Hocus Pocus for the first time ever the other day. Um, I think it's on Disney Plus. I had never seen Hocus Pocus and I watched it the other day. It is quite outdated because it was made like back in the 90s, but it was actually really sweet. Well, this color is Delightful. Look at that pigmentation. And I've literally just decided in this split second that I'm gonna try and do like a wing. A bit more of like a dramatic wing maybe. Shall I add a bit of orange and maybe do like a pumpkin-y sort of themed eye look? I can try. Let's take the shade Sugar Puff, which is this bright orange. I honestly, I don't, I could not tell you what I'm planning to do at this stage. Maybe I should have started with the orange, but I'm just gonna put some of this on. Yeah, I should have put this down first. I do this every time. I 
I 1 million percent should have just started with the orange shade, but it has actually worked on top of that other shade, thank God. Let's dip in to Daisy, which is this one. It's like a mustard yellow color, and I'm just gonna use that sort of on the edges of this. I'm bringing that orange shade like quite far into my inner corners. And then let's take some more of that daisy shade. There are some stunning shimmers in here, like this one called Licky Licky. <laughs> this one. It's like a duochrome pinky orange sort of colour. And then there's one called Inholerant, which is this bright... Oh my god, it's like a hot pink. But... Oh! <gasps> look at that! Oh my god. Mitchell, what the f... Look at those shades! I I wish I had done like a pinky purple look now with that like bluey pink. We've got one called Claws, which is this beautiful blue. There's a golden shimmer called Golden Purr. Oh my. I wanna do some neon yellow. I wanna cut my crease and do neon yellow and then neon yellow liner and then maybe a bit of like some Halloween-y liner, like spider liner or something. Spider liner? Cobwebs. I forgot to mention, I did actually have a play around with this palette when it first arrived. I literally was just like playing around at midnight with it. I didn't put down an eyeshadow base or anything. I just whacked it on over the top of my makeup. But I definitely think that you need some kind of base underneath these because I think they're sort of like pressed pigment style things. I'm then going to take the shade called Soured, which is like this one here, which I'm guessing is supposed to be like sour milk. And it's another matte shade, but I'm just going to pack this over the top of that. Also as well, because this shade, like in the pan, it's sort of neon, but on my eyes, it seems to come out a bit more of like a lime green color. But I think that's probably because my base is more of like a peach. Well, I mean, it's still incredibly pigmented, but I think it would pop even more and look more neon if you used it at a white face. And then I'm gonna go back in with the orange shades to like blend this in because it looks a bit crazy. Oh shit, I should have done that first before I set it. Let's take some more of that like mustardy shade, to, like blend into the other yellow slash green. I'm just taking the bright orange on my lower lash line. For the giveaway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give away one of these palettes. You will also get the light blue Made by Mitchell graphic liner. I will also just chuck in a whole load of other makeup. So it'll be a bit of a mystery box, but you will get the palette. It's going to be open internationally. Obviously, you have to be subscribed to my channel. And honestly, I will probably pick somebody just from the comments below that I often see like interacting on my stuff. There's so many people that I notice comment repeatedly on like my videos and my Instagram posts and reply to my tweets and stuff. And they're just constantly showing me support. So I'd really love it to go to somebody that's actually like a genuine supporter of mine and not somebody that's just like commented for the giveaway. Um, so yeah, just, just leave a comment down below letting me know that you'd like to enter. But by my next video, I will contact the winner by just replying to their comment and then I'll probably ask them for their Instagram or something just so that I can message you. I'm taking the Graphic liner, the yellow one. And these say that they're matte finish liquid liners. I haven't done my inner corner. On my inner corner, I'm gonna take the shade Milky, which is this one. It's sort of like a greeny, whitey, reflective color. I've been filming for so long that it's literally now dark outside and my SD card has run out of memory. So I'm gonna try and be quick with this. I'm gonna use the um, the bright yellow liner and I'm also gonna use the black. And I'm just gonna do a little thing. I'll probably speed it up because I can't talk and do liner at the same time. Oh wow, that is black. This black one is so black. The yellow one, I did have to do a few coats, but because they dry so quick and they are matte, it was really easy to just like add a couple layers and build it up. But I don't want to stop there. I want to do like a spiderweb thing, but I don't really know how to do a spiderweb on my eye. I'm just going for it. So I'm going to start off with three lines like this, and then I'm just going to do like little lines in between them, I guess. Uh, it looks a lot cooler in my head. Honestly, I don't really know what to do from here. <laughs> it's gone so much better now on this eye than it has on this eye. I might add a layer of neon liner over the top of the black. Right, okay, I'm putting the eyeliner down. I tried doing some little like neon wings. I should have just stuck to one thing because now there's so much going on. Oh well, I like the liners anyway. <laughs> For my mascara, I've got the LA Girl Volumatic Mascara. The pictures on the box look very promising. It's like a really spiky brush. 
it's actually a very dry formula for mascara, which I like because you can usually get more volume of dry, dry mascaras. It's gripping my lashes really nicely, but it's definitely a little bit clumpy. That's not a half bad mascara. So these are the eyes without my fake lashes on. So I will stick on some lashes in a sec, but for my lipsticks, these I have seen all over TikTok. And I actually did get sent a whole bunch of shades. These are the Milani Color Fetish Matte Lipsticks. This is the shade Tease. Like, they look really nice. They smell nice. I might do a little, like, lip swatch video of a lot of these shades on my TikTok after I film this. But I'm going for Sensual. Oh my god. Maybe that's a bit much. <laughs> Not feeling this shade with this eye look. I'm not feeling that today. I'm gonna put on one of the nudes, I'm sorry. And I am gonna swatch those on my TikTok, but I'm gonna go in with the shade Pleasure. They feel so creamy. The only thing is, this was the more pink toned nude out of the two lighter nudes, but it still looks very, like even in the tube, it's very, very cool toned. There's one called Secret, which I didn't even notice until just now. Again, okay, on the outside it looks really like, I don't know, nice. And then on the inside, it's like a really cool toned pink. Let's try that one on instead. This is the last one that I'm gonna put on my lips. Does not look anything like the outer packaging. That is really nice. I think maybe I prefer the other one. I'm gonna put a bit of the other shades just in the middle. They're very similar, this one's just lighter. I have to say, they feel absolutely gorgeous on the lips. They look matte, but they feel so, so, so creamy. I'm gonna stick on some lashes. These ones are from Beauty Bay. This is their False Lash Trio. And I'm just gonna pick a pair at random. I'm gonna stick these on and I'll be right back. My makeup is finally done. I went for the middle lashes in the end. I've gotta say, these are some of the softest fake lashes I think I've ever felt. So this is the finished makeup look. I'm actually really proud of this. And I think I've discovered some pretty great products here. Right, I'm now gonna answer a question of the day. If you guys got any questions for me, leave them down below with the hashtag question of the day. Also, I do just wanna say as well, thank you so much for all of your support on my previous video, which was sponsored by bloody Charlotte Tilbury. Like what the? Never in my life did I think I would get to work with Charlotte Tilbury and honestly it was an honour <laughs> and so many of you left nice comments like congratulations on the sponsorship sponsorship so thank you so much I really 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 appreciate it and obviously Charlotte Tilbury is a more luxury expensive brand but some of those products are just and a couple of people did get a little upset because they were like, these products aren't accessible and not everyone can afford them. And I totally, totally appreciate that. Like, I'm not saying that you need those products by any means. Like, they're a nice thing to have, but you don't need them. But I could not pass up an opportunity to work with Charlotte Tilbury because their products are stunning. So thank you to everyone. That was really nice. Today's question comes from Tori Tamman. And she said, I cannot imagine being sponsored by Charlotte Tilbury. I feel like that's when you know you've made it as a badass. You go so love you. Thank you so much. I'm looking at making a big life changes soon and was wondering if you could tell us what, what is your advice for chasing dreams that seem big and scary? I am actually such a believer that everything happens for a reason. I'm not a particularly like religious person or spiritual, 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 f my life. <laughs> spiritual, spiritual, spiritual person. But I do definitely believe that everything happens for a reason and everything in life sort of works out how it's supposed to be. Like there's so many changes that I could have made in my life. Like for example, going to a different uni, moving away to a different uni instead of living with my parents at the time. And like those choices affected all different aspects of my life in terms of like staying at home meant that I continued with my YouTube channel. But then at the time I thought, oh, well maybe I should have moved away to uni. But if I'd have done that, I wouldn't have probably stuck at YouTube and this now wouldn't be my job. If I'd have moved away to uni, my previous relationship ending might have happened at a different time. And then I wouldn't have met James at the point that I did when we were both single. You know, like every, every little decision in my life that I've made up until this point has led me in all different directions to where I am now in this career and with James and with Pinky and with this house and like I really truly believe that even at times if you go through something that feels really shit at the time it will lead you to where you're supposed to be in life and I think life is too short to not 
chase your dreams. And big changes can seem really scary, 100%. And I've had some big changes in my life that have been really like heartbreaking at the time or terrifying at the time. But if I hadn't have made those big changes, I wouldn't have been where I am today. And obviously speaking from a sort of like sensible side of me, if it is a big change, like, um, you know, a career change or something, just make sure that you have some sort of like a bit of stability. For example, if you're thinking of like, you know, drastically quitting a job and throwing yourself into a new career, then I'm all for like changing career and doing something that you love, but maybe make sure that you have like a, a bit of a contingency plan just in case it doesn't quite work out. But I do think that a lot of people in life are too scared to make big changes because they worry about like, oh, but what if it doesn't work? But it's like, yeah, but what if it does work? If you don't try it, you're never gonna know. And I don't necessarily believe in like manifestation, but on the other hand, I kind of do because I kind of did manifest this whole life, but not like where I'm sitting there like, ooh, manifestation. More just like, I've always gone through life thinking, yeah, one day, like, I'm gonna be in a job that I love. I'm gonna, like, have this, I'm gonna have that. All of those things, like, I really just believe that they will happen and put my all into everything that I want to achieve. And I usually can achieve what I want to achieve just with the power of my mind. God, this sounds like such a load of crap. Basically what I'm saying is, life is too short to not follow your dreams. Good luck, make those changes. If you're stuck in a place where you're not happy and you want to do something about it, do it, just do it. Do it, do it. <laughs> right, I'm gonna shut up now. I'm gonna go, um, but best of luck with whatever you're doing. And I will see you guys in my next video.